map of Africa. A proper map of Africa does not have these artificial borders. The reason why we have these borders right here on this particular map is in order for it's, it's in order for us to be able to identify both from ancient time, ancient movements, the ancient movement of our people. Once we reach Africa after 70, roughly we reach Africa before 70 AD. Some of the remnants reach Africa before 70 AD, and some of the remnants reached after 70 AD. Some of them linked up, and others were not able to link up. And now once we went beyond the river of Ethiopia, what Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 speaks about, beyond the river of Ethiopia, very important verse right there, beyond the rivers. Now the river of Ethiopia is clearly what's called the Abai or the, the Nile River. You also know, in Egypt, the Hapet River, and very interesting, ancient Egyptians called the Hapet, and then the Fidel, the, the Gutters and Amharic Fidel, from top to bottom is Hapet. So they say the Hapi, but the pronunciation is the Hapet now, because if you look at it in the hieroglyphs, the head and the tail of a reclining lion is Hapet. Now, let's begin off with Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8. It reads, when the Most High divided to the nations, now in the Hebrew, that's Goyim, or in the Ethiopic, in the Royal Amharic, that's Ahazab, which means plural, the peoples, the Goy means the peoples or the nation, the non-Ethiopian Hebrew, the non Beta Israel nations, and when the Most High, El Elyon, when Leul divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated, the sons of Adam. So who separated the sons of Adam, the sons of man? It was the Most High, El Elon, Leul. He set the bounds of the people. He set the bounds of either peoples according to the number of the Gika Israel, the Bani Israel. So this verse is very important because this verse in Deuteronomy 32 and 8 says that in the beginning, originally, El Elyon, the Most High, he divided the Goyim the inheritance and he separated the sons of Adam he set the bound of the people according to the number the number of the children of Israel now in Genesis chapter 15 verse 18 it specifies what the most high what Yahweh Elohim the inheritance that was given to Abraham and to his zar, to his seed, and specifically we're speaking of the Bani Israel, the Beta Israel, the Dekika Israel. It says from the river of the Euphrates in verse 18 of Genesis chapter 15, the Oriza Fitret or Barasait, you understand? It says specifically from the river of the Euphrates to the river of Egypt. Now, you have, must remember the river of Egypt is the very same river, but further down from its root, that's known as the rivers of Ethiopia, the river of Ethiopia. It's rivers because the rivers branch out and connect and branch out in that land. You understand? And the connection now is Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Link that with Genesis chapter 15 verse 18 also to be linked with Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 8 because we have to know what was the true inheritance for the Beta Israel now the true inheritance for the Beta Israel it crosses the region that's known as Afro Asia or the Afro Asian region of the world so let's get into this map right here and let's let's discuss some of the details that we find in this this particular map. We're going to begin off with this particular map. Now, there's a subscription at the bottom of the map, and let's just touch on that for a moment. It's very small. It's very small, but let's see if we can uh, read it. Um, it says populations. Populations map stressing the smooth transition degree of relatedness between Western red and Eastern yellow Mediterranean. African areas are green, 
show the populations related to populations related. I don't know if that's related right there or something about defined to Greeks live or something about the Greeks it says right there. The populations, so it's very small. We cannot read it in detail. But while we have used this particular map, let's bring it up a little bit, a little bit larger. Let's go to right there. Now, this is very interesting. Now, just meditate on this map, and some of the names should be clear of the places. We're, we're going to focus on the Afro-Asia region of this map. Now, you see Saudi Arabia. You see the Horn of Africa. You see where Ethiopia is. Above there, in the green, it says Ahmara, and then above that, it says Ormo. Now, over in the Sudan-bordered region, it says Nubians. You'll say Nubians, also Ethiopians. They were called Ethiopians as well as Nubians. Those were two interchangeable names. You'll say Europeans later on tried to distinguish one group from the next, but if you look at the genealogy chart, you'll see that Nob and Nuba was a son of Kush, you understand, and therefore a son of Etopis or Tobia. And there's the link right there. But now let's go to the Israel region. The Israel region is very interesting because you'll see at the north, it says Ashkenazi Jew. Now, near the south, it says non-Ashkenazi Jew. So, the southern part of Judah at this particular time were the non-Ashkenazi Jews. Now, the non-Ashkenazi Jews are those who we call Ethiopian Hebrews. The Jews who currently, so-called Jews who currently um, rule the state of Jezreel, so-called Israel, are mostly majority Ashkenazi Jew. You know what I'm saying? Ashkenazi Jew. That's, that's who they are. You know what I'm saying? This is why the big controversy about whether the Beit Israel, the Falashin of Ethiopia, whether they really truly are real Jews or blood Jews or did they convert or did some Jew make them Jew at some time and Juju beads and all that kind of nonsense. But this map clearly is very useful because it shows that the north, remember when we spoke in the video and taught on the ten tribes of Israel? You understand? That were destroyed, the ten tribes that went into captivity, and how that region was repeopled and repopulated. According to Second Kings chapter 17, you can begin around verse 24, the whole chapter in context, but you, be, you could begin to follow this theme that we're on at and around verse 24 of Second Kings chapter 17 to the end. It basically shows how these Ashkenazi so-called Jews or in New Testament times they call Samaritans how the Samaritans came into this particular picture and became Jewish it talks about how these people became Israelitish or Jewish people you understand in the northern region they came in to be repeat they repeopled and repopulated the northern area where the true ten tribes were taken from you understand chapter 17 of 2 Kings is very important to really understand the Ashkenazi Jew and the non-Ashkenazi Jew or Judahite, the Ethiopian Hebrew, the difference, right? Now, after 70 AD, according to history and according to witnesses, even according to Tacitus, who, who was the Roman historian at the time of, of Titus and Vespasian's um, um, sacking of Jerusalem, you understand? Tacitus says that the Jews that he encountered, speaking of the non-Ashkenazi Judahites, they basically were indistinguishable from Ethiopians. In other words, he considered that the that the Jews or the Judahites were a tribe of the Ethiopians. This is in Tacitus, the Roman historian. You can check it out. That that's evidence from that day and time. That's a witness from that day and time. Josephus, in his Antiquity of the Jews, he also speaks about how a remnant came out around 70 AD and fled into Africa. What's also interesting is that 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 30 and 31, 1930, 2 Kings, it speaks about how a remnant will come out of Judah, you understand, and will go downward or southward 
and bear fruit upward. You understand? So when we put the scriptures in the chronological order, in the prophetic order, we basically can retrace through connecting with the history that we find available. We can prove that what the Bible is saying is correct. The prophecy of the Bible and history of the Bible is scientific and accurate. You understand? As well as put together a lot of this mumbo jumbo out there around who's a Jew and who's an Israelite, so forth and so on. All right?